Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another point of view video. Now I'm trying something new in this one. I'm filming in a different frame rate. Now for a lot of you that won't mean anything but um, for those that are quite nerdy in regards to their filming or their tech, uh, you may know what I mean. So normally I film these videos in 60 frames per second but for this video I'm going to try 24 frames per second as hopefully it will give a more cinematic look um, but it may be a little bit blurry at times so this is an experiment it may work it may not anyway you're not here to listen to me speak about uh, filming frame rates so with that in mind let's go for a drive right and away we go in the brand new honda jazz well i say a honda jazz this is the Honda Jazz Crossstar. So this is the SUV inspired model. So you have a raised ride height, a ride height that has been raised by 30 millimeters, SUV style cladding, and of course, roof rails. But apart from that, not much is different. Well, the, um, the seats are actually water repellent. So you may see a wet patch I was trying out earlier with this bottle of water I didn't wet myself in case you're wondering anyway I'm getting sidetracked again so yes the brand new Honda Jazz Crossstar this car is a hybrid so at points you may see an EV icon um, flick up that's because this car is able to go from engine power to electric power seamlessly and in all honesty it, it is a very clever system and you'd have to concentrate quite hard to notice the switch between the two. Uh, sometimes you do get a bit of um, engine noise kind of perk up, but most of the time, if you're just cruising and the engine would be quite quiet anyway, you, you really can't tell the difference when it changes from one to the other. So this is powered by a 1.5 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine, along with not one, but two electric motors. As I mentioned, this is a hybrid. Now you may think, oh, it's got two electric motors. This car is bound to be quite punchy. Well, not really. Um, well, when it comes to, um, oh, blimey, did you see that buzzard go by? Hopefully you did, otherwise you'll think I'm mad. But yeah, sorry, back to the engine. So you may think this is quite a punchy car. Oh, some fellow YouTubers or something. So I will tell you about the power at some point. I keep getting distracted. So this offers 109 horsepower, which is modest to say the least, along with a more generous 253 newton meters of torque. If you prefer that to impound feet, I will drop a subtitle below. Now I'm sure many of you are not concerned about the performance from this car, but in case you are, this will do 62 miles per hour in 9.9 seconds and the top speed is 107 miles per hour. I'm sure you're more concerned about the fuel economy. So on a combined run, Honda states that this is good for 58.9 mpg on a combined run. And in regard to CO2, this car emits 110 grams per kilometer of CO2, meaning for the first year of VED, you'll be required to pay 145 pounds. In regard to other running costs, if, you, if you're um, thinking about insurance, this car sits in insurance group 19, which is a little bit higher compared to the Ford Fiesta Active, a comparable type of car. For those of you that are wondering about finance, if you wanted to have this car on a PCP deal for 36 months with a 20% deposit and uh, APR of 5.9% per month, you would be paying 259 pounds. Speaking of cost, I've not told you how much this car actually costs if you were to pay it, well, if you were to buy it with cash. So the Crossstar trim level, it has a starting price of £22,635. Just, just to give you a bit of perspective, that is £1,250 more compared to the EX version of the Standard Jazz. And in all honesty, are you really getting £1,250 worth more stuff in this vehicle? No. Now this car is well kitted out. 
So to go through some of the features, I have a seven inch digital display, which is what I'm staring at right now. I have a nine inch touchscreen with DAB radio, Bluetooth, smartphone connectivity and navigation. There we are, there's the EV icon. I didn't even realize it had gone into EV mode. Well, I do because it went into, e I saw the EV icon, but if it hadn't have been for that, I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. Right, let's go left. So yes, at the touchscreen, um, it offers um, DAB radio, Bluetooth, smartphone connectivity, and the navigation um, offered up by Garmin. You have climate control, heated front seats, which I'm using the advantage of right now. But weirdly, you don't get a heated steering wheel. Now you do in the EX version of the standard Jazz, but not in the Crossstar version. That's quite bizarre. Also, you don't get blind spot monitoring, although you do get that in the standard version of the EX, quite unusual. I have front and rear parking sensors, a reversing camera, I've got a good amount of safety features such as autonomous emergency braking, seven airbags, um, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control, I've got automatic lights and wipers as well. So there's not really much in this car that you'd be wanting for. I've got two USB ports, a 12 volt socket. Oh God, now that is a nice collection of cars. I've got to give them the thumbs up. Wow. Sorry, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of fast forward. So for me, that is, that's just, that's a collection of porn on the side of the road, if I'm going to be honest. Back onto the Jazz. So this car does not have a manual gearbox. No, instead I have a CVT. Just to correct myself, this car actually has an eCVT and not your standard CVT. Therefore, it does not have a belt or a chain. Instead, Honda states this system has, and I quote, an innovative fixed gear transmission via an intelligent power control unit, which all work harmoniously together to provide a smooth and direct response. Hmm, that may be the case around town, but not on faster roads in my experience. And when you're driving around town, it's absolutely fine now. For those of you that don't know what um, CVT stands for, that it is a continuously variable transmission. So this doesn't have gears like your traditional automatic gearbox. Instead, it has, well, kind of one gear and it changes the ratios depending on the um, the uh, the output the engine is producing if that makes any kind of sense and there are there are advantages for a CVT gearbox don't get me wrong and this one around town is smooth relaxed and it works well however on the open road you get that typical CVT rubber band effect so let me just slow down and pin the throttle hear that that boom there we go before I go over 60 so that is typical of a CVT you get that kind of you get the noise of the engine but it doesn't really translate into any power well not instantly anyway now of course you're not going to be driving a jazz around with your foot pinned to the throttle are you that's more to demonstrate but what I mean is if you want to exploit the engines potential which let's face it isn't much it can be a little bit annoying and frustrating. And the engine is can be quite gruff, in my opinion. Now, when you're just driving along like this, it's perfectly relaxed and it's quite a refined car. It's comfortable as well. This is comf uh, more comfortable compared to the previous Jazz, a car I reviewed quite some time ago. And the inside is more inviting as well. The old car was quite dark and dingy. There was lots of dark, hard materials, and it really wasn't a welcoming place to be. The new car, on the other hand, it feels lighter in here, more airy, and just more pleasant on the whole.
you may have spotted that I have the current drive mode in B. Now you do of course have a standard D function as well, but if you put it into B, you get a little bit of regenerative braking. And I say a little bit because it isn't overly strong and you do have to concentrate a little bit to even notice it, but it's there if you want or need it. I, I don't know why I've defaulted to B mode when I, whenever I drive the car. The brakes perform pretty well. Right, let's turn the car around. I can get a, another glimpse of those Fords if they're still there. Now again, let's demonstrate that, that CVT rubber band. So, wait till I get to 60. Ah, so boomy. And the speedo is going up quite slowly. The engine sounds really frantic, but the, the actual speed of the car is is not going up with any particular urgency. By the way, someone in that Swift Sport waved at me. That was quite weird. I wasn't quite expecting that, but never mind. You may have seen that, you may have not. Now let's speak about the handling characteristics of the car. As you would imagine, uh, from a Jazz that is uh, that has a raised ride height, it isn't the most dynamic car going. However, that's not to say this is a bad car in the corners because actually it isn't. There's a good amount of grip. The steering weight is pretty good as well. Yes, you do get a bit of body lean, but that's to be expected because of the raised ride height. Now, I wouldn't go so far to say this is fun or entertaining, but it certainly holds its own. I think if you're looking for more driving engagement I would definitely urge you to take a look at the Ford Fiesta and and Ford do make a, an SUV inspired version of that as well it's called the Ford Fiesta Active. The Jazz though it's not a bad car it is competent it just isn't fun but to be fair this car isn't really built with that in mind so it's not a complaint it's more of an observation. Visibility out the car is very good. The glassware is quite large, so I've got no issues seeing out no matter what angle I'm looking at. Visibility is very good. And although I'm out of more sweeping, faster country roads, this car is really at home in more of an urban situation. And driving this car around town, it is an absolute doddle. It is very easy. As I mentioned, it is very easy to see out of the car. The steering becomes lighter. It's easy to maneuver. So if you're looking for a practical, spacious, small car just for town driving, then the Jazz could well be right up your street. This Jazz, like the previous version, has the magic seat system to make it even more practical. And the boot is a fair size, not massive, but should be enough for most people. The rear space though, even for a taller person like me, I'm six foot two, is impressive, that I will say. Let's see if the fast forwards are still there. Well, have I gone past where they were? I think I have, haven't I? Or were they up there? I think they were up there. Yeah. Damn, would have been great to get a photo. Some tasty motors knocking about today. Well, there always is around Goodwood, but uh, this week is Speed Week at Goodwood, which I think is kind of an alternative to uh, the Festival of Speed, because of course that had to be cancelled due to COVID-19. And I actually saw, now it may have been a replica, but I saw a Ford GT40 earlier. I couldn't believe it. But that's, that's one of many lovely cars that has been uh, driving about the area. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked again. Back onto the Jazz. Now, as much as I wouldn't buy a Jazz because, because I'm about 30 years too young, the average age of a Jazz driver, by the way, is 61, believe it or not. 
But if I were in the uh, position to buy a Jazz, well, if I was old enough to buy one, I should say, would I? Well, it is a practical car, but I think this particular version, the this particular version, the Crossstar, I think it's a bit of a gimmick. Now, you could argue that about the Ford Fiesta Active, and to a certain degree, I would agree with you, but at least with the Ford Fiesta Active, it has specific driving modes for more treacherous conditions. It has a slippery driving mode and a trail driving mode. This doesn't have any of that. So this is very much a pseudo SUV. At least, at least the Fiesta Active tried a little bit to be SUV-like. This, on the other hand, is kind of all style, no substance, I'm afraid. This particular car is finished in surf blue, although I think they should have called it blue rinse, with a matching crystal black roof. Earlier I said the ride is, is well, I said the ride was better compared to the old car, which it is. It's more compliant, the damping is better. I will say the ride is a little bit busy, but it's not a complaint, it's more of an observation. At no point have I felt like I'm being jiggled here, there and everywhere, because I haven't. Overall, the, the Jazz is quite a, a relaxing, easy-going car to drive when you're not pinning the throttle, making the CVT make lots of noise. Well, I suppose the CVT is making the engine make a lot of noise, but hopefully you get my point. That's interesting. The high beam assist came on then. Seems a bit needless at almost 5 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, but hey-ho, it is starting to get dark in all fairness. I want to know what they're filming. I want to be nosy. Well, they must be filming that, that Porsche, that, that uh, Cayman, but I might have a... I might drop by to see what channel they're filming for. I'm curious. There we go, guys. I haven't really got too much more to say about the uh, Jazz Cross Star for the time being. There will, of course, be a, a full in-depth review as opposed to just a point of view review. Ah, CVT, so annoying. I just don't like CVT gearboxes. I'm yet to drive one or test one, which is any good in my opinion. Oh. Anyway, I don't want to end on a negative. There's plenty of positives about the Jazz, although, like I said, I think the Jazz Cross Star, the car I'm in now, is a bit gimmicky that is my opinion but i'm sure there will be others that agree with me car park's empty now right let's park up here so there we go guys another point of view video done i do hope you have enjoyed it if so be sure to like comment and subscribe if you are subscribed don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time i make a video but until the next time guys be sure to keep up the car obsession